Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for March 16th, 2020 at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, per Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, Open Meeting Law and 940 Section uh, CMR 29.02, Open Meetings, the Select Board Board of Health uh, hereby call an emergency meeting to consider uh, develop emergency protocols and provide um, appropriate authorization to act outside a select board and board of health meeting to respond to the impacts of COVID-19. Um, I'm going to read a kind of a summary of our, our emergency measures so far and then I'll, I'm going to open up the meeting to the board here and, and to um, Chief Paturik. Um, so <clears throat> Town of Deerfield Office of Select Board, Board of Health, COVID-19 emergency measures. In consideration of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health emergency declaration on March 10, 2020, the town is hereby implementing emergency measures intended to reduce exposure, transmission, and illness associated with 2019 novel uh, coronavirus COVID-19 um, by and among the public while visiting and conducting business at Deerfield Municipal Facilities or Town of Deerfield programs. The town continues to follow guidance from the U.S. Centers, Centers for Disease Control, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, regional health and emergency response agencies such as Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition, uh, the FERCOG uh, Regional Emergency Preparedness Committee, and Massachusetts Emergency, emergency Management Agency. These measures are enacted to protect public health and safety. They come following careful consideration of the impact on accessibility to certain programs and services to residents, businesses, and institutions, as well as the ability of the town of Deerfield to conduct essential business. Town leaders and staff will work di diligently to mitigate the impacts of these emergency measures, which will be uh, subject to revision as the COVID-19 crisis evolves. The Select Board Board of Health hereby authorizes through the town administrator the following actions to be taken to protect the public health and safety of the community. One, all municipal offices will be closed to all public access until further noted, um, until further notice. The public is encouraged uh, to utilize the town's website to conduct business insofar as possible. Staff contact information will be posted at each entry. All, number two, all community activities, recreational, council on aging, library, school, sponsored through the town will be suspended until further notice. Three, inspection services, building, wiring, electrical health will only do inspections on an emergency basis and will otherwise work remotely. Four, all public meetings and hearings will be closed to the public and to the extent the law allows, such meetings may be continued, postponed, or reformatted to conference calls as technology allows. Board and committee members may participate remotely in accordance with the order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, OML dated uh, March 12th, 2020, signed by the governor. For any public hearing, the town will be asking the applicant's cooperation to continue the matter before the board for a limited period of time. Um, uh, number five, OML notification requirements which is open meeting law notification requirements remain the same, meaning that postings must appear on the bulletin board in the municipal offices in clear view. However, with the capacity to publish meetings, agendas, and materials on the town website, the public is encouraged to use the town website, www.deerfieldma.us, as much as possible. Number six, the town will limit the exchange of documents by hand unless absolutely necessary. The public is encouraged to submit requests and conduct business online whenever possible and submit payments using the drop box available outside town hall. Seven, transfer station operations will limit contact between the public and employees. Customers are encouraged to organize items for disposal prior to visiting the facility, minimize trips. Additional safety measures may be implemented as need needed. These emergency measures will remain in effect for several weeks and until further notice to the contrary to ensure con uh, continuing the continue, con excuse continuity. Me, continuity, thank you, of town services to the fullest extent possible. The select board, uh, board of health, uh, retains the right to meet and amend or rescind them as necessary. Thank you all very much. Um, Chief Pachurik, 
love to invite you up, if you could. Which spot's better? Anywhere you'd like. Open mic there is good. So thanks for helping to organize this meeting and get us all on the same page of where we're at and where we're going. Not a problem. What, uh, what would you like me to focus on, Trevor? Do you want me to focus on what police are doing, or yeah. do you want to just kind of open it up? Uh, it would be good to get, I know that you wrote some new policies, and I'd love to hear those and let the public know what that, what that is, and then we could open it up. Sure. So we did adopt a policy on March 13th, and the police department is not allowing visitors any longer. We are doing pistol permits renewals by mail and by email. New pistol permits will be entertained in uh, the first part of April once we see uh, where the numbers are actually going with this. I think it's important to focus on that uh, there are no known cases right now in Franklin County, right. but the goal that Carolyn always uh, emphasizes is we're trying to reduce the spike so the healthcare services are able to render care. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to mitigate the spike and see a slight rise in the cases so we can deal with them as they come. If we see this massive rise in them, then uh, the health service industry does get overloaded. So that's the goal. That's why everybody's shutting down. And I think that does need to be emphasized mm -hmm. on camera as people are home yep, watching will. this. Definitely Police will. department wise, we are doing the same thing that town hall is doing. We are limiting our exposure. Again, there's no visitors allowed. Uh, Deerfield PD's always been very friendly. Any given day, you'll find three, four people over there having coffee. Um, with regards to taking papers in the lobby, we're not even doing that. We literally are handwriting this stuff down when somebody comes in with a complaint, so there's no exchange. We are respecting the six-foot rule. When we stop cars on the side of the road, we're asking somebody to read us their license number. We're going back in the mobile data terminal, verifying their license photo, verifying their license is active, and taking any measures we need from there. So you will see increased police visibility. One of the things we are looking at doing this afternoon, I have an emergency meeting with my folks at 4 p.m., is we are looking at going to the 12-hour rotational shifts. I'm looking at taking full-time people, assigning them to their own vehicles as a take-home vehicle, four days on, four days off. A group A works 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Group B is on 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. That way there is no exchange of a cruiser or excess personal in the station. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a four-day rotation or even an eight-day rotation, I have 24 people. This reduces that 24 people down to eight. Now you're only dealing with eight people touching keyboards, touching the back entry doors into the station, crawling in and out of the cruiser, forgetting to clean the cruiser after a medical call. They're assigned that car to four days. Mm -hmm. At the end of the four days, they clean that cruiser. It's turned over to somebody else. That next group cycles in. So there'll be ultimately two groups, four days on, four days off to reduce any risk. And this is not just about continuity of police operations, but it's also for protection of the employees as well as the people we respond to for spread of it, including their own families. So it's all the way across the board. Good. It's to protect everybody. That is something we are gonna be meeting uh, about at four o'clock this afternoon. Uh, Deb is still gonna be coming into work. We do have obviously the bulletproof glass window. Uh, the lobby will need to be cleaned more often uh, than we have been in the past. Mm -hmm. And there are several other protocols that we are going through. We did post, I know the board got a copy of the policy and procedure. Mm -hmm. We did post the questions in the booking room about whether you've traveled to a foreign country, whether you've been sick. There's uh, seven qualifying questions in here. If they show up positive to any one of those questions, we've agreed to notify several people, including the district attorney's office, the judge's lobby, uh, district court, the, um, the clerk's office, et cetera. The jail right now is, uh, is on lockdown. They are not accepting prisoners. So if we do have a weekend arrest, we are required to hold them in our cells here, which is a staffing issue. We would have to call people in. On top of that, you run into the side issues of if a prisoner has medication or medical issues where they need care. Um, there's a vast variety of things that are coming into play that uh, we often take for granted. So we're working through them little by little as we go. And my hope is that in Franklin County, we never see the spike mm -hmm. and that we just take the proactive approach, continue to, uh, to do what we're doing. And I think the town works together very well. So yep. thank you. But I'll entertain any questions that the board or anybody else has. No, thank you very much for that. Um, I thought, uh, did, did you want to hit on anything before I go no, around? No, I think it's better just to go around the room and then we can just talk about what we uh, are looking at to do. Okay. Um, Darius, do you want to give a 
quick update. I know you had a, a meeting that came, uh, a message just came out just recently about uh, food and kind of actions that you're taking at the school. Yes, sure. Great. Um, would you, would you mind? Uh, thank you so much. Coming up to the mic. So people at home can hear you. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Yep. And I want to um, say thank you so much for all you've been doing. You've been <laughs> working really hard and juggling a large part of this. So yeah, it's been crazy. appreciate it. So basically, from a school's perspective, um, we're uh, kind of looking at the hierarchy of needs now that we've closed the schools. Um, and for those who weren't paying attention, they've, you know, everybody knows they've got, they're now closed for three weeks. We can probably expect them to be closed longer, but we'll wait and see. Um, we're, we're working on the food. Out to, we don't have the programs that other communities have that are doing summer programs and that kind of thing for food. So we had to develop them. <laughs> You didn't have gloves on, that was good. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, we're developing those um, today. They'll be starting tomorrow. We called every single family individually who's on free and reduced lunch and asked them if they wanted to sign up. We'll be both having distributions at the schools um, and doing delivery as well. Okay. Um, I do want to coordinate with the towns, um, not just Deerfield, but the other four towns regarding seniors and if mm -hmm. they want to be added in on to the food program. Right now, we will take a loss on money-wise, but we'll worry about that in the longer yep. run because we're not, we don't receive, because it has to be over 50% of free and reduced lunch in order to receive federal benefits at this point. We're hoping that they're going to change that, but that's yep. not my concern going into it. I'm just going to say that out yep. loud. Yep. Um, I did just send an email right before walking in here out to yep. families that even if you don't qualify for free and reduced lunch, but certain the changes in our environment are causing different economic um, hardships, mm -hmm. that we will add you to that. Um, we'll add the children on 18 and under to the uh, meals program. So it's both breakfast, even some of our towns qualify for breakfast and some of them don't, but we're doing breakfast for all and lunch for all. And so the, the lunches will go out with the following morning's breakfast as well. Okay. So you're not, you're not oh, doing first thing in the morning. So, so wonderful. you know, straightforward, you know, straightforward meals at this point, we're yeah. using the materials we have on site and then we will be, um, be able to order more um, for inventory next week and so we can kind of plan for the brown bag lunches and that kind of stuff. Great. Um, you know, side note, we're working um, with the nurses to get the, you got to remember, we have stockpiles of medications on students. Yes. Now they're gone for three weeks. We're trying to get those returned to, right. to families. Um, and then um, right now, um, just essential personnel. We have uh, custodians are cleaning the buildings to get us back to a baseline of mm -hmm. um, zero in the building, so to speak. Um, and, you know, obviously office staff are in the building right now. I may follow the lead of having no unnecessary visitors. Um, that was a good thing to pick up today, but you yeah. know we got to keep payroll going and that kind of thing. Right. I had a, uh, a meeting of the chairs this morning of the school committees to discuss trying to set up. Um, we have multiple meetings this week of uh, for uh, public comment on the budget in both Sunderland and Conway. We're working on those decisions right now about what we're going to do there. Um, okay. it's, you know, it's fast and furious. Um, we're also working on. Um, providing continued education at homes. Mm -hmm. So um, we've already kind of reached out to families, let them know that's coming so that the kids can continue to have activities being supported by teachers and other faculty members. Um, you know, through three weeks is a long time to be at yes. home to stop academics, um, you know, from all the way from, from K to all the way to the, the high school. Um, so we're, we're putting that together. We hope to roll that out on Wednesday. So basically the governor, um, not the governor, but the, or Desi has basically said we have to go to school for 185 days to our 185 day calendar, excuse me. Um, so we're not being required to make up all but three of the days this week. We're gonna um, have to make those three up and anything after that we're not making up. So we really don't believe our educational mission should stop. We should also be supporting Correct. families at home, yep. giving kids activities, academic activities. Um, the teachers are already on board with that. We still have to do some contractual stuff with that, but. Um, on Friday, we just happened to have an early release day. We already were kind of ahead of it. We saw it coming. Teachers met and started working together to put programs together for kids. So we're great. kind of getting ahead of that. So that's great. we'll be doing that as well. So that's kind of in Good. a nutshell, um, you know, where I'm at Good. with school. Do you think you need uh, staff at all as far as like I'm thinking like delivering stuff out or how are you doing? Like even the medications going back, do you have? Right. So right now. On the meds themselves, um, I imagine there's rules about who's of course who's going to carry not. I think in a lot of the meds that we do have, um, parents epipens and that kind of stuff. They have extra. They probably have one at home, mm -hmm. and so it may not be a necessity. So the nurses are working that out. Okay. Um, with their the, regarding foods, we are if people are interested in, in donating, and I'll be interested to see if the seniors center is going to want to get mm -hmm. to jump on board on that, or if they have right. anything. I just. 
it's our, we already have the kitchens going. We already have the staff members going there. Right. Um, you know, food, we'll figure out the bills and that kind of stuff later yep. on. But, yep. um, you know, we have a lot of people who've already reached out to us wanting to volunteer. Yes. And, and I got to tell you, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, it's a true nature of our community right now in the sense of um, I got teachers that saying, can I deliver meals? Can, yes. I, can I do more? Can I help you with this and that? And yep. So, um, I got to tell you, I got to put everybody in a queue right now because right. know, that, that's a good thing. That's a good problem to have. It is. And so yeah, absolutely hopefully is. that problem continues. That's great. So, so we'll help work with you on that. Good deal. Yeah. So on a side note, can we keep track of all the costs on the side mm -hmm. and our town accountant will grab them at one point. If we're able to get 75% reimbursement for the school district, mm -hmm. then we can submit them mm -hmm. and try and get all the funding back for you yeah. right. and Absolutely. at least minimize that impact. Second thing, uh, Volunteers are always amazing. Mm -hmm. If we oh. come up with a standardized guide sheet for them that they're volunteering in seven different areas and they got contagious in this area and now they showed up to these other six. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, have we, we have to be very item. cognizant of what they're touching, where they're going, who they've interacted with. Yeah. Um, I just had this conversation with my mother this morning. You can have the best interest in the world. You can be symptom free for five days, go visit 17 seniors and just have given it to 17 seniors. Right. So we almost need to come up with a guide sheet that mm -hmm. they sign off on on the bottom, understanding and respecting these yeah. are the concerns. Yep. Also, be very careful also we want to just, um, if you are using um, volunteers, Darius, mm -hmm. we want to sort of um, get an idea of the hours because potentially hours can be reimbursed to uh, some standard. Right. In, in, in regards to the volunteers that we're going to need outside of me, because we still have a full, we have a full staff. Yep. People, we have we shut down obviously, so we got a lot of people with 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 time. Yes. Um, but you know we're basically deliveries between um, eleven and one is when we want to deliver the food, yep. food Good. materials to people. Mm -hmm. So that's two hours, and we'll we'll keep yep. track of everything we got going. Okay. That'd be great. Good deal. Right. Zach, Zach, can I pull you up in that? Uh, yeah. Get your input on this and thinking about protocols as far as. Um, we're gonna run out of chairs. <laughs> social distancing ourselves. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Darius. You've Thank you. Really, you've been really lovely to work with. I just want you to know, so appreciate it. All so right. Welcome, Jack. So uh, from the EMS perspective, uh, we're still on duty. We still yep. have normal crews. We haven't seen a big spike or anything in the amount of calls or anything like that on the EMS side. Uh, we do have full-time staff locally. We do have local volunteers, but a lot of our um, additional staff that we put on during the day is augmented by full-time paramedics at other agencies. So if this does turn into a large regional thing, we might have to you know, look at those staffing models and things like that. But right now we're not seeing um, any sort of uh, increased demand right now. Uh, with that, I want to remind people that you know 911 and emergency medical services is for emergencies. Right. Still, the best way to take care of yourself for common flu and cold symptoms are rest, fluids, relax, stay home, stay away from people that you might get sick, um, and just take care of yourself. That is CDC guidelines. Mm -hmm. So practice some self-care on that. If you have symptoms or you're worried about your symptoms, or you're concerned about it, the best place to get your questions answered isn't through 911, it's through your primary care provider or wherever you receive medical care. Those are the people that know your history and kind of put your questions and concerns in the context of your overall history and give you some guidance. Yep. If you have any symptoms that are significant or severe, so difficulty breathing, dizziness, chest pain, or you're not sure whether your symptoms are severe or not. If you have any sort of doubt, call 911, we'll come right over. South County's still on duty, um, and we are practicing the recommended CDC guidelines for both enhanced assessment and also enhanced personal protective equipment for ourselves and the patients. And that's so we don't get sick and we don't transfer it to other people, and also that we're making sure the patients are getting the best possible care possible. Best possible care mm -hmm. possible. <laughs> Good. Um, Thank you. Let's see, what else? Um, you know, we, we, always, we always practice cleaning and sanitation of our equipment. Anything that touches patients, a patient might touch, anything our responders touch in the course of treating a patient, that's typical normal stuff for us. So we're continuing with that. We're still cleaning and sanitizing after every patient contact. We do have washers and dryer, um, which were donated to South County EMS. Uh, which was wonderful at our station so our providers are being directed to not take their uniforms home but wash them at the station so that way if there is any sort of cross-contamination onto their uniform it won't be brought home as well 
Um, we're also having our responders uh, do some self-monitoring. So before they report to shift, we always encourage that if anybody's sick on my department that they just don't come to work. I just, we never begrudge somebody for calling out sick and now especially. So we're actually having people monitor themselves even closely, even more closely, take their uh, temperature every morning if they have any sort of symptoms, just to call out sick. No yep. problem with us. Right. Um, and uh, on top of all this, we're, we're coordinating with police, fire, Medical Reserve Corps, CERT, the senior center, trying to see how we can kind of reach those people who, through this necessary social distancing, are going to become more isolated. So right. obviously there's a balance there. There's a, there's a circle that needs to be squared as far as limiting exposure, but also not allowing these people to be isolated. So if right. anybody sees South County vehicles out in the community, it might just be us paying visit or checking in on people. So um, we're, we're looking at how to best incorporate that. I'm meeting with the senior center later this week to, to figure that out. And uh, I think last but not least, everybody should wash their hands and don't touch your face. Yeah. Uh, wash your hands, don't touch your face, really, stay six feet away. Really hard. Um, <laughs> we're doing great. Uh, the vast majority of us, this, this is a uh, significant concern. I mean, it looks like the mortality and the morbidity rate is higher than the regular flu. Uh, yeah. We understand that, and that's why we're taking these, these precautions. Um, but you keep our distance, wash your hands, don't touch your face, and the vast majority of us will be okay. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll address the, the serious cases as they come up, and let's just look out for the people that uh, don't have the same level of health as the rest of us. So one question I had was, uh, and this is actually a question, um, Chief Melnick was hoping to be here today but couldn't due to other, other commitments, but he, um, he was wondering as this, as this um, you know, crisis goes on longer, or we will start to, I mean, just odds are we will start to have cases in, in the valley. We don't right now, which is great. Um, but we, he was wondering how does he protect his guys? Is there, a, should, and maybe this will be guidance out from somebody down the road, but would there, you know, if you were being quarantined, is there something to be taped to the front door? So if there's an emergency and you're called to that house, you guys would know right away, yeah. okay, this is what we're dealing with. We need extra protection when we go in or, you know, yeah. instead of somebody that isn't, you know, isn't being quarantined or isn't tested right now. So uh, there's multiple levels to that. I mean, obviously there's a, you know, national and state level um, database for people that are, you know, being screened in or yes. out or things like that. There is patient confidentiality issues and stuff like that. So we're trying to figure out how to share that information in the most right. appropriate means. Yep. Um, when somebody calls 911, our PSAP, which is a public safety answering point, basically 911, that dispatcher, they have screening questions as well. So they yep. are going to ask about your symptoms, if you have any symptoms or things like that, and relay it to responders ahead yeah. of time. And then... Uh, our first responders, my department staff, the other agencies are all being directed to limit the amount of people that have close exposure. So in the past where other, the police, the fire would all respond to medical calls and give us a hand and come in you know, and help move mm -hmm. items or things like that, right. we're being directed limit by the that. state to say, you know what, we only need two people in the room, so right. only two people are gonna go in the room Thank you. Thank and, you. And, and kind of focusing on that. So just. Six feet is enough, I mean, yeah. really. So just by not going into the house or going into the room with somebody coughing is, is sufficient to That's protect good. yourself. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, you have a car accident or something as this goes on. Three, yeah. Three months, two months from now, you know, when yeah. it's, if it's everywhere, um, you know, how do we deal with that? So. I, I think, you know, the, I talked to Chief Melnick this morning oh, about, good. about, you know, how do we identify these people beforehand? Uh, mm -hmm. We're asking questions as part of our assessment. Good. Even if you call with a broken leg, we're still going to yep. be asking questions about you know, Health. a cough or thing like that. Sure. Um, you know, the idea of maybe posting something on the door feels a little scarlet letter. -y yes, to me. it so, does. <laughs> <laughs> so I can understand why some people might be hesitant to do sure. that, which is totally appropriate. I would yeah. just say, you know, if, if you feel the need to reach out for services. Please that, let people know. Yeah, that yes. who you're communicating with, just let them know, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and right. we don't need to telegraph it per se. Sure. Right? Yeah, sure. but exactly. to share that when we can. Good, good. Thank you. Are you looking at extending the rotations? Not right now. So right now, it, as far as like our shifts and stuff yeah. like that go, we haven't seen a bump up and, and our shifts right now are such that we already have kind of those extended rotations. So somebody will come on for a 24 hour shift and so they, they will have a bunk room and a truck for that duration. So we're not having the same handoffs that the police department has with their schedules. So we're, we already kind of address that inherently. Mm -hmm. If and when our call volume increases, 
uh, the whole system's going to be taxed, and I'm going to be cooperating with Franklin County EMS and our neighbors to kind of figure out what the best model um, to address everything is going to be. And it, it'll probably be calling people in for for longer shifts, just so if we lose some of those I per didn't diems. Know if you'd contemplate going to like 48 hour. I, no, and and I, I'd be hesitant to do that. Only our policy is we don't have somebody on shift longer than 24, um, just because if if it safety. gets busy, yeah, safety wise that. Your your ability to concentrate diminishes quickly, but that's all that's all in flux. I mean, this is a situation we've may have to change. Yeah, yeah. we've never really dealt with before. Okay. Good. Uh, you want to hear I think things? well, Zach. The only thing I wanted to make sure is that um, the request, uh, Casey, maybe you can address the, the request to get Zach on Maven. Has that gone in? Has the request to get Zach on Maven? Has that gone in? We, no, it's drafted. I have to put it in. Okay. okay. I've been we need to, to get that. This connectivity most of the day. Oh, okay. No, so, I know you've been stressed. So I, Maven I is basically a, a reporting center, so communities can look and see, right. you know, what types of cases. So there's a being a regional EMS service and public health. We're looking to see if if I can get access. Well, I know Waitley yeah. Waitley put, um, authorized you to be on Friday yep. at our meeting, and Sunderland has authorized yeah. him to be on Caitlin. So it's really the board of health that get so, it in our town nurse right now, so and she notifies right. so right. us. I'll get right. it out before the yeah. end. Of yeah, day. I just want to make sure he um, is yep. uh, ready for the yep. training. I don't want to have to have him based on me giving no, him guidance. Yeah, I think we're yeah. <laughs> not real tech savvy. No, no, I have my cheat sheet and I can get on, but yeah. I want Zach on, be able to get on and see for all three towns. Mm -hmm. I, I, you it's know, important. it would be a relief to me not to be the. Yeah, yeah, on that. great. So that would be good. Thank you. Anything else? No. And and that will give you a heads up. Of, yeah. As we, as the cases get reported, they'll go. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Yes. And please, <laughs> please reach out to us if you find you're in the need of supplies yeah. or right. uh, we're so trying to look I, at. So actually, yeah. what I wanted to know is what your status is on supplies. And mm -hmm. I am um, the discussion afterwards. We get report through. I just want to make sure I'm um, putting in a request this afternoon through Mapco to the Homeland Security meeting. We have a MAPCO meeting later, mm -hmm. and it will go to the Homeland Security meeting tomorrow for materials. So yeah, we just I, need to know what you might need. There's a national shortage. Uh, mm -hmm. Thankfully, we have reserves where at our consistent level, we're not running out right now. Uh, the CDC guidance, you know, there's kind of like perfect case yeah. scenario mm -hmm. uh, yep. about what would be nice to have and where, but the CDC guidance is that we can ration our supplies to very specific patients and Yep. That, those are things that we're trained in assessing. Good. And so we can ration those supplies, and we're still covered and protected and considered low risk, even treating somebody who's a confirmed case by rationing those supplies in that way. Okay. So I, I'm working with the HMCC. You know, I'll let you know yeah, if, if, if we get to that point. But right now, I, we're, we're doing <laughs> so far. <laughs> we're we're going to change. For, we're going to vote on some supplies this Great. To this afternoon, so you should get some additional stuff coming down from Great. our cash, mm -hmm. um, you know, our MAPCO cash. And Very good. I'm hoping to that will be decided this afternoon, and then, but this is for a new request, so I'll talk mm -hmm. to you. I can talk to you offline to make sure I got everything you need, and that goes for everybody. Right. Anybody that Gee, needs everybody. anything, we need. I need to make sure I get a list um, for this afternoon so that we can vote to put that up to the Homeland Security meeting good. tomorrow. Very good. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Thank you. All right. Thank you. What was that? Do you go supply cones so I don't? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cones. <laughs> I think the takeaway is about two weeks ago, the dispatch center updated the ProQA software with the coronavirus questions as mm. part of the standardized response protocol. Good. If anybody addresses those questions in a specific category, they say yes, that they've had interactions or symptoms or anything in that nature. The responders are advised confidentially in advance. Okay, Officers good. are texted on their, their phones mm -hmm. or the mobile data terminals, and EMS is notified as well good. confidentially good while good. they respond to the house before they get on scene. That's great. So if somebody That's does good. call with chest pain and they're getting questions about their foreign travel, yeah. understand there's a thought behind it. Sure. It is the software, and it's triggering the dispatcher to ask that. Good. Good, good. You been, give you an update? <laughs> sure. I know you've been busy on uh, this little Yeah, so here. what we're putting in place is internet and teleconferencing 
connectivity and so we got our we got the equipment today but we weren't able to test for the meeting so right. I do apologize no, that's okay. um, the good news is is we should have it up and running hopefully by Wednesday okay um, I would we're gonna I'm hoping to test tomorrow too but we'll see how it goes yeah we've got some issues through the, the firewall what, stuff, yeah. what firewall we're seeing issues. what we're seeing is, is that everybody is so busy you're getting bumped off the conference calls yep so well we have a dedicated line line now yeah. and that's okay. what we did we got right. we got the equipment and a dedicated service so that hopefully this doesn't happen with us but we'll mm -hmm. see um, the other thing that's going on is so you have the emergency measures um, I spent some time talking to council about our response for employees mm -hmm. and I would like the board to consider that if you do have the meeting tomorrow night which I'm hoping we will even if we do it remotely yeah. because we do have to deal with the budget yes um, I would like to have that something ready for you guys to vote because it's going to be necessary to deal with employee questions and how we're gonna uh, handle people in the workplace people staying yeah. home right. so I will have something for you for tomorrow okay um, the other thing is is I've been talking with some of the department heads about how they're handling their own spaces. John already had his Done. his um, information sent out on Saturday. Yep. Um, one of the things that we were concerned about was inspections because if inspections aren't, emergency net, aren't an emergency need, we don't want to really interact with people too much. And I spent some time with Bob and, and Wayne about this. So that was one of the reasons that when I talked to council, I included that yep. because that is also a connection where you're close to people right um, transfer station is something that Kevin and I have been working on and what would be very useful for us is once we have sort of an operational plan for the transfer station um, he and I should be able to put that into place right away so okay that I would like the board to just acknowledge that we can do that yep. um, um, I contacted Gina McNeely so if there's anything for the Board of Health she can cover okay. um, do you guys so have any questions issue. for me uh, no, I think uh, Kevin. Do you have a second? I was going to ask you about. Um, I, I don't know if we got to this yet, but I was thinking um, about the stockpile we have of stuff getting over to the church. I don't know if you've had a chance. Did you it did this that. Morning Thank before you. Before we even talked. Awesome. <laughs> he read our really minds. Appreciate that very much. No problem. So. Um, so, have to go through that. Yeah, I think we'll get over there. So all the supplies have been brought down. The only thing it didn't bring down was all those signs and stuff. Yeah, no, that's fine. The older we'll, signs because they didn't hold up anyway. I know. We, we should look do at a drive-through thing. Well, so yeah. all, all of that stayed up there. If you need it, I'll bring we it down. Get but it. we haven't used it the past three times because it's it's kind of plastic and yeah, falls and apart. it falls over. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, we're. Um, I had set up uh, actually a, th a four town meeting t on on Wednesday at two o'clock mm -hmm. here, but I think we're going to cancel it because because I'm reaching out just trying to get all the towns on the same level and it's well, you most could do a call into it we mm -hmm. can use the conference bridge yeah. well it's okay. just you wouldn't be able to use the conference phone until we test it but you could do it remotely well I was going to postpone it because I don't I don't think we're going to have the tests aren't going to be available I, I was are. assuming tests were going to be available this this week and that <laughs> potentially we might be running tests by the weekend so I wanted us to be all organized but um, I don't foresee us getting uh, the, that level of testing, um, drive-through testing done for at least a couple more weeks. So okay. yeah. um, I, I much more yeah. rack. My, my timeline was, was I was working on March 22nd. This was based on us having the tabletop on March 2nd and going through our list of all the things that we had to do. And my mm -hmm. drop dead date was March 22nd to have everything organized because I felt strongly that that was going to be it for us um, to be able to get together. But I, it doesn't make it's sense. Fluid. Yeah, it's fluid. it's fluid. We don't have testing, so um, we'll have plenty of time to get the signs down and organize the signs if we were going to do a drive-through mm -hmm. testing. Okay. So. If, we're, if we were to utilize those, just be advised yeah. we're going to have to do something different because the stands themselves, they fall end up apart. being attached mm -hmm. to regular saw horses anyway. Right. I know. So, yeah. It's all the same stuff that we had right. problems exactly. with before. So, but what I need to do is Gina's working with, um, Gina McNeely is working with Conway to get them up and to running. I feel like we're getting Waitley up and going, and especially if Zach gets on Maven and we'll have some stuff. We'll have some yeah, backup. And, and Sunderland, Tom Feitenkevich and Caitlin yep. Rock are organizing Sunderland. So we're working on our uh, volunteer list. We're working on trying to get people organized on what medical people we have and, and so. I think we'll be re relatively ready to go if we ha if we need to. 
And one yeah, other thing is that, that we're pushing information out as it's coming in, creating links to changes yep. that the like the governor's announcement yesterday. The three weeks versus instead yeah. of putting them up, we're putting links to them up. So yeah. if people have problems, they can email us and let us know. But we're trying to make sure that we have as much updated yeah. information as we can. Right. Thank you, Kevin. No problem. Appreciate Ooh. it very much. Thank you, really, hey. Kevin. Thank you for having hauling all that stuff down. Christina, do you want to come up a second? We'll just chat a minute about you know your needs as well I know that you know we've been um, talking a little bit offline about you know how we can help and getting lists together so and and maybe we'll do this offline but I just wanted to say that we're trying to get those lists and the news about the food through the schools would be huge as well that'd yeah. be really helpful because I know life path is going to be overwhelmed as well um, so I think um, the idea is to kind of go through the list that we have maybe the senior center list that you have we also have a uh, triad list mm -hmm. that would you know issues mm -hmm. that people have and mm -hmm. we just want to make make sure we have one consistent full list of who we want to get in touch with um, and anybody out watching this if you if you feel you have needs please reach out to us um, reach out to us here at the town or through Absolutely. Christina at the senior center um, and anywhere that you need to get a hold of us get a hold of us and we'll find a way to get to you um, and get you the help you need and we just want we need to have visibility we need to know who you are and what you need so that, that then we can try and help there. Um, well, a bit of an update. Um, so, so some good news. I just actually got off the phone with Life Path right before coming oh, over good. here. Um, as you can imagine, they're inundated with all kinds of stuff going on right now. Yeah. So I was patiently waiting to speak <laughs> to them. But um, at least as of now, what we've worked out is they will continue to deliver um, meals the night before we would normally be serving so like Tuesday night yep. for Wednesday's meal but they will break them apart into individual portions like on a tray okay and that would all be frozen you know would be in the refrigerator Tuesday yep. night um, and then we'll set up kind of a drive-through so to speak that um, I've been telling some people between 11 and 12 yep. on Again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because that's when we yeah. used to serve the sure. lunch. Um, and someone will, you know, go out and f give them the tray through the window and yeah. limit, you know, limit the contact. Um, but at least now that obviously still brings up the people that can't get to the center. Correct. Um, so we're also making a we're work and again this is new information but yeah. the few people I've talked to I'm working on a list of um, to get a better idea about who would actually need it delivered right um, and and then we'll go from there about how that will look um, we have th you know we have three employees right away you know at the center and then we've had certainly had offers of volunteering and. Mm -hmm. um, and that would, and if we are delivering it, we would like leave it outside the door, and we wouldn't even really interact with the, you know, we wouldn't mm -hmm. interact with the person. So there's there's still some details to be worked out, but um, Life Pass said even as of this Wednesday, they can have food for us. Okay. So. Um, so we'll, yeah. So I guess maybe then offline we'll figure out which is the better path and figure out well, the, we'll, the right thing to do. Yeah, because you're doing it five days a week, right, Darius? Your deliveries are. I'm sorry, what are you doing? Oh no no no, that's all right. You're 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 doing your deliveries five days a week, right? It'll be five days a week starting tomorrow. Okay, perfect. Well, we'll we'll get something coordinated so for sure, mm -hmm. um, we'll work together. Yeah. And um, I'm like I said, we'll get the other towns involved, and so mm -hmm. um, we'll get the list, cross check the list and yep. stuff. That'd be great. Right. Yeah. Um, and we're we're um, we've already reached out between. Uh, Sue Corey and I, um, yeah. we've already probably reached out to about 55 people Good. today. Thank um, you. This is all three towns, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're, we're, you know, we're, 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 we're working off of our list. I yeah. don't have um, an updated triad list, okay. but my understanding was the triad members were, call, were checking in with those people right, right now. Yeah. But yes, I, I definitely think things need to be kind of coordinated so we're not 
maybe calling the same person and five minutes late, you know, um, yeah. thing, you know, and to have a ma main list would be great. But mm -hmm. um, at least while we're trying to figure this all out, um, I do know yeah. both of those things, you know, try a list they're being reached out to and um, our list, we're reaching out to them. Um, yeah, because we, we know that, you know, social contact is extremely important. Um, yes. As they're, you know, people are home longer and longer. As the, as the weeks go on, it's going to be a lot Yes, a lot more difficult. Exactly. And, um, you know, people are a lot more healthy when they're socially contacted and have even just a conversation. Yep. You know, it doesn't need to be an emergency. Anything they need, anything fast. They just want to talk. So. Yeah, I've I've encouraged um, everyone. You know, definitely call if you, there's something we can help with mm -hmm. or you have a need. But also, if you just you need Wanna to talk, talk. <laughs> that helps. Um, that that helps you know, lot. we're available. Yep. Um, and. A lot of people weren't aware that we'd still be working, right. so that was good to pass. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, well, you'll be there. Okay, good." And and it seemed to provide some comfort. It does. So yeah, they know somebody's still around to, to right. call if they need something. So yeah, good. so, so thank you for we're all still you're doing. working things out, but yep. we're we're on a good path. So. Good, good. Thank you so right. much. Thank so you. on a side note, we have yes. been notified by the sheriff's department that they uh, they have suspended the triad program. Okay. So they are not going to be doing home visits, and that was on my discussion list with Christina, where we need to get together, whether it's the Board of Oversight, whether yep. it's Triad, uh, the Senior Center, we all need to come together as one, compare both lists, yep. figure out who we need to reach out to, and then assign certain amount of people to each person to reach out to. Right. So if Sue wants to make 30 phone calls a day, right. Christina wants to make 30 phone calls a day, and then we take two volunteers to do 30 phone calls, but we do have to reach out to these people and right. maintain that continuity and consistency. Yes. Yeah. Are you getting your medication? Are you okay? Is there anybody living with you? Has right. any, this a perfect opportunity? Has any of your medication changed? Right. Who is your next of kin? It is a yeah. perfect opportunity to fill out a sheet to, on behalf of every single individual mm -hmm. to compile a database to make sure they're okay. Right. So if we can facilitate even, that meeting, absolutely. Yes. That would be, yeah, that's that would be good for all of us hope. to sit down in the next day or two. I think that's some that. good that can actually some good that can come from oh, this yeah. is that we get more organized more up, about that. And more yes. up yeah. information on what, yeah. what our seniors need in, mm -hmm. in case of an emergency like this. So. Yeah, we literally just got that at about one o'clock this afternoon. Awesome. So that's, that's on my radar, but we do need to set up a meeting and sit down together. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. What about the, uh, I don't know, it seems like about every couple of weeks, a food truck comes in here and uh, drives off. Brown lunch? Yeah, no, the brown. No, it's oh. all kinds of stuff. It's like the food bank, the, those tomatoes, and they hand, they bag up and hand stuff out here. What's the story with that? I mean, I've never been involved in it, but I've noticed it. Brown bag I only lunch. know about the brown it's bag. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, once a month. And um, the last night, because I was inquiring about that, and... The answer as of now is we don't know <laughs> in terms of if that's going to okay. still go on right now. It already occurred for March anyways, um, yeah. so the question would be at you know, April, April. obviously. First Thursday, Barb? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I think as part of that questionnaire when we reach out to the senior citizens is to validate, verify do how often they're reading. Yeah. Yes. Do they have access to resources? And we need a standardized questionnaire that we go right through with them to figure out their needs so now we can coordinate it with the volunteer, with yeah. the school, with Darius, and then yeah. ultimately are they going to be able to pick it up or do we have to deliver it? Right. There's a full access sheet on there with That's a three-ring right. binder and we're tracking people literally day to day. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, as long as you guys are healthy, I'm certainly not your boss, but <laughs> both of you should be showing up to work. We should be establishing these tracking sheets, and we should mm -hmm. be going right through. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Absolutely. Good. Yes, and it shouldn't be just Deerfield. It should be all three communities. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yep. And if yeah, we, we have to get the triad list for, uh, yep. for Waitley and Sunderland, we certainly can reach out. I Let's can get those that. from Jim and, uh, and Eric as well. And then pull in you know, Tom and John and yes. everybody and figure out where we're at. We should pull in Conway, too, because that, yeah. you know, that's part, part of our schools Darius as well. will be doing that. So we yeah. need, we should make sure that mm -hmm. Conway has yeah, that. I can email Kenny. Yep. Good. Yep. and get their list. That'd yep. Be great. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, anything else? Any, uh, oh, Lori. Do you Lori. Want, Lori, do you, you want? Is there anything you want to say? Well, you can put a pitch in that people should sign up for rave for well, sure. I, say, uh, I think John and Zach and everyone who spoke filled in a lot of the holes. Uh, one bit of great news that came out of that mailer that we sent out. I saw about six hundred new enroll in oh, for, for the rumble system so that's great so it's another plug yes. keep, keep signing up it's Please a great method to get information out absolutely yeah, yeah. great 
Yep. Yeah. Adam's got some questions. Yeah, question. Sure. Uh, is Web EOC, or should we be monitoring that? Is that going to be any value to us at this point? I don't think that we've established. I, I I've been on the DPH website just to check because uh, they have their Web EOC. Right. I haven't gone on MEMA. Um, just because I, I hadn't heard it that they have um, instituted one yet, right? Yeah, instituted well, something they, that's they are, access. They are open and running with their yeah, yes. but they aren't. I didn't realize. I didn't think that they were putting out any resources. Have they? Are they putting out resources? I that was my question. Yeah, yeah I don't know. On Saturday, that they were, were staffing up their their right. uh, operation. But I, I, I haven't. There's any I haven't been on the web. Yet. I Someone think it should be designated, or Lori yeah. should be checking. I think we probably should, we could probably open ours and have it open continually, right? And then that way, if anything comes or if requests that we have can be sent out through that. Yeah, I guess. We could. You're on we that, could, right? Or, yes. Yeah. Lori could monitor. I, it. Yeah, I think that maybe. Because she can get on to it faster than we can, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And we can open our, our event that? at any Why time. Don't, I don't yeah. know that it's necessarily at that point we're not yeah. requesting resources or uh, overwhelmed I, would, well, I was I just would, checking I would I was checking love that. to request resources but <laughs> oh yeah no we are <laughs> but I don't right. know if, what if that's the avenue they will come from well that's my question uh, the HMCC is how you request your initial resource mm -hmm. request at this point and Mima is coordinating with that. and that Mima is okay. coordinating with that but um, I've been just I've gone on the web EOC DPH's web EOC a couple times just to check mm -hmm. if there was any activity in our area, but there isn't anything going okay. on. I mean, people are putting in requests, but there's no, no ability to fill them at the moment. Right. So, um, another. Uh, based on how our normal enforcement goes with Board of Health stuff, um, you know, with the closing of restaurants and that stuff that you're being ordered. What is our plan for enforcement? Are we, is that a Richards deal? Is it a Board of Health order? Has the town hall called all of our yeah, establishments no. that the governor's requested closed, spoke with them, and made sure they're on board? I think that that happens this week, because we need, you know, today and this week, because we, you know, it's only takeout, right, for now. Mm -hmm. and, and even still, when you're coming into that counter, you know, you need to, put on a glove and take that credit card or, you know, have somebody run it themselves and wipe down the counters constantly. Um, you know, I dropped off some stuff to, to a local pizza joint today, uh, yesterday, just to make sure that they, they had nothing. You know, the, these it, businesses too, I think kind of got caught like all of us and went to go to the grocery store to get hand sanitizer and they have none. So, I mean, they may have some stuff laid up, but you know, in the back, but there's, there's a need, I think, if you're going to be a business and you're serving food, that you need to make sure you have the supplies out there and whether we need to make sure that they have them or we're a resource for, to get them through some sort of emergency, get a hold of stuff, that it's important. So, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely dig into that. I, I'm, you know, I'm not sure if, if, well, if our current building inspector would be the one to go out, but we will definitely need to be making phone calls and getting out there. The, yeah. uh, right, right now, health inspectors. Sorry. Uh -huh. Our health inspectors on self quarantine. Yeah. Oh, is he now? Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure about that. So, so. that's why I have Gina. But you have Gina on. Yeah. But there's uh, not enough for. We'll have to all dig into well, maybe that. Maybe the off, maybe the administrative staff in the building inspector's office before things are closed should go through the list of permits. Yep. Who has who has permits? Yep. What their permits are for? And make phone contact with them. Yep. Make sure they understand the regulations and make sure that they're voluntarily going to comply. I don't think that we. Should we should just try to head this off ahead of time. Right. You know, I think it's important that we reach out to our businesses that have those so Adam, to actually, that's a very we can do that, but understand that it's a staffing issue over here as well. Yeah, so but that's a very good idea. There's an Adam. ABCC, um, I'm sorry, Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. Mm -hmm. There's also a notice from them that we pushed onto the website, but we do have to call those yeah. those restaurants because like you said we need to get in touch and make sure they're following the rules mm -hmm. well we'll do that after yes. after our meeting here yep jump on that anything else you got no i think uh, pretty much a lot of people covered a lot of stuff that we had on the list okay that we came up with today but you know thank you for i think just coming the, up the underlying list. the last thing i have here start is a communication i think it's important that uh we have some you know some clear messaging um we have the systems, but I think we also need to have some some other uh, internal messaging um, in, in 
enhancements mm -hmm. so that we know if you know Zach's changing things or if there's you know I think it would be good to know and I understand there's some HIPAA issues but as cases increase it would be good situational awareness for the public to know and even if it can't be done through the doctor's avenue if people in the public are concerned about their neighbors and they have this or they have symptoms of this and they're gonna they feel so that they're at risk and they're self quarantining there should be a way for them to let us know mm -hmm. if they want to if they want to yeah i mean i think sharing that you know so your neighbors and all know and they know not to you know come over or you know knock on the door or something like that it would be i mean it would be helpful it's not it's not one of those things where people are going to get stigmatized because just about everybody eventually is going to wind up with this so it's it, the whole idea is to wind up with it in a long drawn out period so it, we're not all getting it at once and we're not all going to the er at once and overwhelming the system uh, but it's one of those things where it's got to go through the population and not everybody's going to get it but a lot of people will so it's you know it's not like uh, oh no you have it you get you know it's not a big deal you just got to let people know so we can be protected and um and just slow slow that curve down i, I just had a question for adam um we we have set up um uh, just the joint information systems we moved our meetings from thursday to tuesday now so the new messaging will be out tuesday night or wednesday morning do you want to start posting that on the police um facebook I'm not, I'm not talking about necessarily pushing stuff out. Talking internally. But I mean, I, you do a great job with a lot of different acronyms that aren't really, mm -hmm. you know, everyday knowledge for the police department, yep. for, for instance, or, you know, different boards that are really geared towards this stuff. And you have a ton of information that may or may not be valuable. And, you know, if some of that stuff gets pushed out to John and can get pushed down the ladder. So we know a little bit more about either threat perception or mm -hmm. what's going on in the future so okay. we can plan and we can and know that stuff I think it would be helpful because I think there's a lot of valuable information that people that are really in tune with this type of stuff you know public health nurses and yep. are, are different than uh, your first line first responders whether it's police fire or EMS mm -hmm. we can and do that and just the general public too yeah I mean I, I, I've always been this of a stance with the police department and I think, you know, Lori with Grade and stuff, we're on the same page that we're not going to push out things that you're getting from everything, everybody else. Right. You know, we don't need to fill up people's news feed with the same thing that Mass.gov is true. posting yep. or the news is posting. And that's okay. not our job. We right. posted today here field specific. You know, the Chief did stuff over, over the weekend. We changed things. We posted on our Facebook, you know, how to get police reports. Yep. All those situations are, were available before, but now we're really just pushing that out there that you can email Deb, Deb can email Amelia, you know, report back yep. and save people from coming in into the station. But that was all specific to things that we've changed. So right, right. I don't. No, that makes sense, Adam. That makes a lot mm -hmm. of sense. So that's fine. What we can do is make sure you get the messaging, and then you you can we can tailor it. But things will change as we go along too. Yeah, um, thank you. Yep. I think on one hand, it's almost important that we cycle information daily and just send a, a quick three minute email to each other of any changes or new additions, because as we look for any reimbursements, mm -hmm. it is significant documentation to go back to those emails, print them out mm -hmm. and show the budgetary side of them. And now you're going to get that 75% reimbursement. Yeah. But what we often see is we get so calculated in everything we do that we go from phone call to phone call to phone call. At the end of the day, we go, oh my God, I, I did an amazing job. I accomplished a lot today. But the other 17 people that stand behind us don't know what we did. So it's important that we take that information and we just push it out to everybody. Mm -hmm. And it, just that quick five minute email can go a long ways from all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why I try and cycle that information down from everybody. So I would, uh, I would wanna check in with Sue at Rec and maybe Kevin at Highway and, and see anything with them. We're just going to follow whatever happens in the schools. Yeah. And then go back to school, we'll start off our rec program again. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, uh, is there... I tell the kids to go outside in their yards. Yes. Their yes, please get outside. Get and, you mm -hmm. know, you need to go outside. Yep. That's a safe place to be. Yep. Out by yourself, playing. <laughs> um, Sue, is there, is there pro any programs that you can push out to the kids? Because you have a lot of contact information of kids that have signed up for programs. Is there any programs that you can push out to kids that they can, you know, like to do? 
I have, you know, games and stuff to do in the yard, that type, I can put something yeah. every day up on the... On that would be huge. That would be my... That might yeah, be that would be helpful. great. Good for parents to yeah. get um, them outside. Yeah, just just whatever you can come across, something that um, kids can check on a regular basis to, and, and use your contact list. That would be good. South Deerfield Fire, are you in good shape? You're following everything you... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you for coming. Anybody else? Kevin? Kevin, we chatted. You're good? We're good. Um, Brenda, do you have any concerns? Is it... Um, has anyone submitted anything to you yet? Okay. Um, Barbara, how about, I'm sure you had concerns that you were worried about um, staff exposure, but now that we've closed the town hall. Yeah, I mean, we have a busy window, so we see the public quite often. I will say, timing-wise, we don't really have any active bills out right now that are due. Um, if there's a good time, this is a good time. Yeah. Um, nomination papers were due today. Um, probably my big question is, as it is yours, what happens with elections? What happens with town meeting? Right. Um, the next two weeks, that's what I would be doing, is preparing the ballots and right. that kind of thing. So okay. what happens with that? Right. We're I don't know. So I guess I need to be in touch with you. Yeah. Um, whether I have to change my routine as far as ordering ballots for an election that we may or may not be able to assemble. I don't know. Right. <laughs> so. um, well, I had asked Casey to send out mm -hmm. information last month, yeah. and um, nobody's really made any decisions. Well, I know, Michelle, there's legislation pending, um, Michelle yeah. Tassinari from um, the Secretary of State's office. So, so they are proposing things to enable us, um, and there's towns in worse shape than us mm -hmm. that have an election or a town meeting in the next week or two. Oh, so, boy. Yeah. So, um, so again, our timing is not the worst. Right. Um, so hopefully something be in place that we know how to... Uh, yeah. go about the procedures of changing our election if that need be. Yes, um, and town meeting. Yeah, but we will have to keep a, um, We're I'm, waiting. I'm yep, in we close will. contact Good. with the clerk's association is great as far as information yep. and um, town um, council's always also been very helpful yeah. sharing that. Yeah, we'll reach out yeah. to us if you so need like us So like I said, do I don't anything. have a really big, the motor vehicles already paid, um, all those like bi big bills that um, come to do. If someone needs something, um, they can buy um, online uh, marriage licenses, uh, death mm -hmm. certificates, they can um, do pretty much anything but like trash bags because we can't right. <laughs> get it to them. Yes, but they exactly. can also go to Leader Lumber and the mobile gas station That's right. to buy trash bags. Yep. So, yep. Um, so I guess I, I'm not keenly concerned about not being able to interact with the public in the next three or four weeks. Okay. We will be sending bills out April 1st. Uh, many people are comfortable and take advantage of our online bill pay, yep. which is right on our website, super easy. Use your checking account and routing number. It's 25 cents, cheaper than a stamp. Yep. Um, and it posts that day, so okay. you got your fuzzy slippers on at midnight <laughs> and like, oh, I forgot to pay. You can just do that. Good. Um, and it's great. It's a, it's a great tool to post right to the account. And, um, so... Dog licenses, you can do dog licenses online and we can mail the tags. Okay. I don't know what else we might have, but. Yeah. Yeah. Right back, but town hall is closed to the public, but staff is still gonna be here to answer phones and questions. Yes. 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 All right. Yeah. yeah. For the we're, just, we're just limiting their, their exposure. Mm -hmm. All right, I just wanted to make sure the public yeah. knows that because yes. I know Read a lot yeah, yeah, there was a lot there to read. Yeah, so yeah. again, well, yeah, all municipal done. offices so, so will be mail closed. Will get sent out, so just so the public knows that, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, they can still call and ask. Yep, a question. Or, We're still yeah. here for them. Well, we ramped the up the. Go out on time. Yep, bills yeah, will go we, out on time. <laughs> well, we ramped up the cleaning, but we were concerned still of public exposure. Mm -hmm. So right, no, absolutely. Yep. 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 So um, we're certainly here. So okay. you can call. Um, yep. Utilize the website for paying bills online or ordering, you know, certificates or whatever online. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Good deal. So we'll stay you. tuned about the election and town yes. meeting as we um, Yeah, and let us know if you hear what, anything or whatever, yeah. vice versa. We'll exactly. Get yeah. Things out okay. So I think one of the points of emphasis with this also is this is not going to be two to three weeks. Right. A anybody that's, that's researched this knows that we're in this for the long haul, that we're going to watch the projected numbers and the cases in the next 30 to 60 days and make an educated decision of where these are, outbreaks are starting to happen. If there's an outbreak, you're going to see more severe ramifications or mm -hmm. actions from those communities. Yeah. So we have to be very fluid about this. 
and you don't want people to be paranoid, you just want them to be Safe. cognizant. Yep. All it takes Wear is a simple safe. touch of the counter at a convenience store and somebody came through town that's contagious and filled up with gas and you don't even know. Right. You just have to be cognizant. Wash don't be paranoid. Right. You don't have to inundate the stores. You don't have to grab everything off the shelves. Yeah, Society please. is going to continue to run. Please leave the toilet paper for but others. But you have to be <laughs> cognizant. That's all. <laughs> yes. Hey, so listen, we are I, in this for the next year. I mean, it, they're projecting the vaccine probably early to late next year, yeah. depending on how quick they can validate it. Last time they rolled out a vaccine too rapid, we had several uh, issues with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was several health right. concerns that came back. So they want to be very cognizant of that this round. Yep. But, but we, um, I think we've made the decision to first responders are our priority. So those will be the, um, I'm sure it will come in small batches. We'll do it like we did the H1N1 event. First responders, uh, then our volunteers, and town staff, and um, so, we'll, and then we'll open it up for the general public and um, we'll be doing rolling clinics. Make sure we get everybody and his brother. And then guess what? Then we'll have too much vaccine, mm -hmm. just right. like last time. <laughs> so, um, let's see. We have plenty of needles, so we're ready. Yes, we do. We are stocked for that. No, <laughs> no doubt about that. Um, I guess I would, a couple of things I've seen online was, um, you know, this community is wonderful. They want to reach out and help um, everybody have offered babysitting and all. Um, and I, I think our, pri you know, our priority is, my priority is you know, nursing. <laughs> you know, a lot, 30% of the nurses in this country have kids in school. So with all the schools shut down, uh, it's important if, if, we're, if anybody's going to volunteer, it shouldn't be like a, a bunch of people, all different strangers, watching your kids t during the week. You pick one person if you must work. If you're in, or you're in a you know an emergency service or you're a nurse, uh, doctor, you need to get to work. It's obvious you need to get to work, but you need somebody to watch your kids. You pick one person, and you make sure that they take all the precautions um, you know that, that they can to to do that. You don't have multiple people come in, and 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 you shouldn't be you know, doing large play groups with all kinds of kids coming over and activities because you really need to hunker down this time. We can either be uh, Italy or we can be South Korea. Those are the two, two large cases out there. Um, Italy, it, it, it's heartbreaking to, to watch those doctors yes. have to decide who's gonna get a ventilator and who's not. And, and that's because they didn't take the proaction that South Korea took and they were all over it and they, you know, shut everything down. Italy was too late. So that this may seem drastic and ridiculous to some people, it is not. I mean, we, you know, our hospital beds are 80% full as it is on a good day. And here we are in flu season. And then you drop this on the top of it, we're just not gonna be, we're just not gonna be able to take it. Take it. You're gonna have to stretch this out as long as you can. So that's why if you're in that medical field and you need to work, um, there are people willing to help and that's wonderful. Just make sure you vet them and keep them you know, at, um, keep them as safe as possible, washing possible, don't have a bunch of kids over. So um, it's tough not to have play dates when all the kids are home and it's nice out, but just get your individual kids, have some family time, go for a walk in the woods, it's safe out there, so. I can't emphasize that enough. My daughter-in-law is South Korean and her uh, family is safe, but they are completely locked down and that's how that society is making it through. They, they are making it through because people are just staying home. And um, she has nieces and nephews and the people are, you pick one family or one caregiver that you are sharing the, um, you know, care, child care with. And then you make sure that you all are deciding that you are really going to limit um, your expo public exposure. It when, really does work. When hand sanitizer hits the shelves again, buy one for your family. Because you think you're getting eight and you're all set, right? But your neighbor or the guy you're going to bump into couldn't get it, couldn't wash his hands. So guess what? You get it anyway. So just get what you can. Leave the rest for everybody else. We don't need to wipe out every single toilet paper roll in the Franklin County. It's unbelievable. Um, so, okay. Um, and anything else? Um, well, Dave, thank you. Two things. One, uh, Comcast is in the process right now with Xfinity to uh, change over their system. So if you have 
voice. All you have to do is say education, and I'll come up with a whole program for uh, learning for the oh, children. Um, and two, the thing that's crossed my mind, with this sudden declaration, I'm assuming almost every restaurant in town has excess inventory that's maybe prone to spoilage. Is that something that we should maybe talk to them and see uh, for the school or somebody for yeah, we um, could do that. Could be for really distribution good. of food or a senior center or something? Yeah. Um, because, you know, obviously it makes more sense than throwing it away. Mm -hmm. uh, because the takeout is not going to be to the extent that the sit-down sit is. So. Uh, there's going to, you know, a lot of restaurants plan, and uh, a lot of the inventories come in on Mondays at, that they ordered last week mm -hmm. for the week. So uh, it's maybe worthwhile to contact some of them. See, yeah. uh, is that something that the school would be interested in taking if the restaurants? Or I know your yeah. your it's venues kind of are pretty well office. set. So my, my cafeteria director. We should okay. check in with her. Yeah. Because we're doing bag lunches, it's, there's only so many. Yeah. Um, yeah. Items. Yeah. It's hard to put a burger in a bag lunch. <laughs> right. Everybody wants the, the burgers and pizza. I imagine the kids, the kids want, but that's not what we're sending out. That's yeah. Just, <laughs> so. yeah. just fair warning. And in order, you have to follow the government's. Yes. Yeah. USDA yeah. guidelines. Yeah. yeah. So, but it may be so something for the senior center or something. That just, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's just. No, it's a good thought. I hate to see all that food <laughs> stuff thrown away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. So. We should try we should try to connect so. with the senior center. Okay. Any other questions? We will constantly keep you updated as much as we can as new things come out. We'll be posting online and holding meetings and we've got new turtles here to be talking into and make sure people can call in and we'll conduct town business. You know, life will have to go on. We'll find I'm a way to do that. <laughs> um, as much as we'd all like a three week vacation, there'll be some stuff to do still. So um, uh, with that, a uh, motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Thank for you. Out.